Hi there, I'm Angie Scar, and here is the pineapple project that many of you have been asking for. This one's not for the faint-hearted. It's a production method, so you'll have to expect to use quite a few packs of Fimo and a lot of patience. You'll combine shading and stacking techniques to produce a truly spectacular result. I use an ordinary kitchen pasta maker set to the widest setting to condition the clay. It's also useful for the work I'm going to do later. A pasta maker is not terribly expensive and you will find it useful if you're really serious about working with polymer clay. This is an ochre colour that I'm using. It's one of the colours in the pineapple. I'm going to be blending two colours through from orange to, a, to this ochre colour. Form two squares of the colours of clay and then make them into triangles. Lay the triangles over each other to make a double thickness and then you need to put them together to form a square again. The shading is formed by the fact that one side leans more heavily towards the orange colour while the other side towards the yellow. It's very important that you stick the two together really firmly to make sure that they don't separate in the process of rolling it through the pasta maker. And you should tidy the ends off so that it doesn't distort in the process. You need to fold the square over from the top to the bottom and squeeze it and then roll it through the pasta maker in the same direction. You need to continue folding once or twice but in, always in the same direction the same direction as you're going to pass it through the pasta maker until the shading starts to appear. As you can see it's well shaded through from the orange to the ochre. I'm now squeezing and folding it up again so that I can form a block of colour. As you can see it's orange through to the central colour of each little piece. This is blended quite nicely. Start gently at first to squeeze it and then you can push quite firmly as I am doing. Control it while you're doing it. But push quite firmly, squeeze hard. And I'm forming a cube first then I'm going to manipulate this cube into a, a more cylindrical shape with the ochre in the middle towards the bottom and the orange on the outside. We're trying to simulate the colours in each little section of the pineapple. I'm just removing an air bubble. When a pineapple's not totally ripe, each section's defined by a sort of green piece. The line between each segment. And because I want it to go through from brown at the bottom to green at the top, I'm going to form a second Skinner shade for the flat skin to go around the outside of the cylinder. You'll see why later on. So again I form the triangles and put them together.
lining them up. It doesn't matter if it overlaps slightly on to, top to the bottom. That's right. Again, pass it through the pasta maker until it forms a nice shade between the sort of leaf green and the dark brown. We need this for the lines of definition. This only needs to be very thin and it needs to wrap right around the orange cylinder. Again, being careful not to get too many air bubbles underneath the skin. Wrap it round and trim it off. To try and get it to meet in the middle. Sometimes it gets a bit sticky when you've been using a pasta maker. I think I've cut that a little bit short. So I'm going to have to rescue the bit I cut off. Because these need to meet together without any overlaps because they'll show up as lines later if there are overlaps. Fortunately, I didn't scrunch this up too much. So I'll try and line it up. Watch for the overlap and trim it off. And then just nip those two together to make it meet. Don't forget to pierce the air bubbles under the skin. Because that air can be damaging later when you try and put things together. Just squeeze it out. You need to squeeze and roll this cylinder into a much longer cylinder. Squeezing it at first, and then you can roll it out. As this gets a bit too long to handle, you can cut it in half. But try and remember which end is which, which end is brown and which end is green. And we'll be starting with the brown end. Because that's going to go around the sections in the bottom half of the pineapple. Again, if you find any air bubbles, this is the time to get rid of them. You need to cut this into strips of approximately an inch long. That's two and a half centimetres for some of you. Then you form these short cylinders into a square profile with your thumbs and, thumbs and forefingers working against each other. These will go side by side these, and on end in a diamond shape. Since I didn't make up a large enough cylinder, I'm using these leftovers to form triangles to support the diamond sections. I need triangles in the bottom, which will then allow the diamonds to sit into them. So again, I'm making a square profile that I can chop up into sections. Then I can chop each of those sections down the middle to form a triangle for the base. I'm starting with the pieces from the brown end of our cylinder. I'm putting the diamonds end to end on top of the triangle sections.
place them side by side carefully. And then you'll have the, the sort of valley shape you need to stick the diamonds into. Again, I'm forming a square profile and then sticking it in. This is a little time consuming, so um, to shorten this pro process I've made fewer than I usually would. Normally I'll use twice as much clay and make a lot more of these pieces so that I form really quite a large stack. But this is half the size that I would normally make. In fact, I'd often make it three times this big. I just need to fill in the top triangles, so again I'm using bits of the leftovers to fill in the tops. This really is to keep the definition of the diamond shapes, because if you don't fill in the spaces, when you come to squeeze it, they squash down into a peculiar shape. These little triangles just hold those diamond shapes in place. You can't have empty spaces when you're making a cane, because where, you, where your empty spaces are, the cane will distort. Squeeze this in the middle quite firmly. As I say, this is to make sure there's no air remaining in the middle and that all the pieces stick firmly together. You can be quite firm about this. I'm cutting it in half now because there are so few diamonds in this shape and we need some more. So all I'm doing is halving it and placing the two together. Again, it's really important that you squeeze quite firmly and keep the shape the one you want it to be, rather than allowing it to become a cylinder. When you cut through the middle, you'll see how, you, how your works come out. For the centre of the pineapple, you need a very translucent yellow colour. I'm using yellow translucent Fimo Soft and ordinary translucent Fimo in a mix. This is half mixed already. So I'll pass it through the pasta maker a few times to mix it even more. You need it on the wide setting and you need to check that there's no material underneath the pasta maker. If you think there might be some, give it a wipe with a cloth. Obviously you don't want to get any dirty colours into your mix. And 
mix it really well. You also need a centre colour, which is a bit more orangey, just very slightly different yellow for the centre, just to mark it out, give it a bit of definition. This is a slight exaggeration, which I'm doing just to make it more obvious. You need to form a little cylinder of this colour. That's for the very, very centre of the pineapple the sort of hard cube up the centre. A hard tube, sorry, not cube. Form it into a cylinder and put it to one side for later. You also need the lines to define the pineapple. So this colour has got a little bit more white in and it's less translucent so that when it's oven set these the lines that I'm going to form with this colour will show up. This needs to be really quite thin so I've set the pasta maker quite thin for this. Add your sheet of the less translucent colour to the top and trim it off. Then I'm squeezing it together and I'll cut it in half and stack the two halves together. I'm using a tissue blade for this because it's a little longer, makes it easier to cut, but you can just use a single sided blade. Stack the two up, one on top of the other, and then squeeze them together. Then you can cut and stack them up again. You must make sure that the lines, it goes line translucent, line translucent. Squeeze these into a longer section because we're now trying to form the stripy outer part of the pineapple. Lengthen it until it's worth your while cutting, cutting it in half. And then put the pieces together. You really do have to maintain the shape at this stage while you're lengthening it. It is a rectangular boxy shape. Although you can squeeze the inner bit just slightly. You'll see why in a minute. Again, I'm going to cut it into two, put those two side by side, and then I'll cut it down into three pieces, which I can put round the central core. Here I'm putting the strips round the outside of this central core. looks a bit like a flower, doesn't it? Again, it's really important that you squeeze the cylinder very firmly in the middle. really firmly push it to form a capstan shape. This makes sure that everything sticks together and it keeps the definition of those little lines. You can start to roll once you're really sure that the shape isn't going to slip but you really need to work outwards from the centre. 
Don't worry about the shape at the moment because once you start to roll, the definition will come back. It's just a matter of squeezing and pulling. Then you can squeeze out towards the edge. I've lengthened it a bit further, so now I'm happy to roll it. You'll need to roll it till it's about um, a centimetre and a half. That's about half an inch in diameter. And then you can cut it into the pieces that you need for the pineapple. This is the cutter I use for pineapple leaves. It's part of a micro cutter set. You can either use one from the daffodil set or the iris set. If you have difficulty getting hold of them, you can get hold of them from me. Just cut out several leaf pieces. These ones are even Skinner shaded. This is the really fiddly bit because Fimo can be rather sticky depending on the weather and the humidity. You need to pick up the little leaf shapes holding them carefully on one finger and stick them together. round and round to form a stalk. As you build them up you need to go slightly lower with each leaf. You'll need to stick this over a wire to cook it, to oven set it. And uh, here's a trick I use. It stops it sticking to the oven. I've formed this little former which I can use over and over again. It's a little tricky to stick on but once you've got it on you can just leave it in the oven to set on the end there and pull it off when it's hard. You'll need to cut a slice or two of the skin. In this case we're going to cut two slices because it's quite a small piece that I've made and you need a short piece of the pineapple cane just get it to the diameter you want cut a short piece only about a centimetre and a half long half an inch or so and uh, gently round off the edges. It's important that you remember which end is which because when you cut through it later you need to be able to see those lines in the right direction. So don't form it into a ball because you won't remember which is the end if you do. I'm covering this now with the skin and I will need to patch this together and be quite careful about it. I'll have to make sure that there are no overlaps because you will notice overlaps when you cut the top off. So I need to trim these pieces and then add second sliver of skin onto the other side. Just carefully line it up and trim those edges, as I say, so there are no overlaps. 
you can just smooth over that join. And I'm just smoothing it round the top and bottom. But it doesn't matter if they don't meet exactly because you're not going to see that bottom there. Or indeed the top. It nearly meets. Using a small flat tool, this is a paint stirrer that I have. Put the definition back onto the surface. Working on the diagonal, just define the edges of those di diamonds. Don't worry if you can't follow your lines exactly or just as long as you get somewhere near. Then you fill in the opposite diagonal. Then you can cut off the top and lay it down. Snip the end of the leaves, which you've previously hardened, and then you can push them into the top part of the pineapple. I fill the joint with scraps of brown, which I've made up from a mix of the colours from the skin. So your leftover bits, you can just mix together and form this light brown colour, which you can push in to the edge of the just underneath the leaves. Incidentally, this is a caramel colour that's very useful in a lot of other miniatures, such as onions, etc. You can define the centre by using an icing nozzle with a very fine hole in the middle. And just to emphasise the lines, you can use a craft tool or a cocktail stick. You don't need to display your pineapples like this, of course. You can cut, up, cut them up in any direction. You can quarter them. You can have them peeled or sliced. I really hope you enjoyed that lesson and that it's a springboard for your own ideas.